Welcome, everybody. I hope you enjoyed learning so much about the inspiring Catherine Finney. Oh, my goodness. I'm just blown away learning about her journey as not only an entrepreneur, but also as an investor. Having heard a bit about her experience with Pathways to Capital, we're so excited to dive into our session on grants and other programs that could work for you. My name is Letitia Gaither Davis. I'm the founder and CEO of Therapeutic Focus. It's a pediatric therapy clinic located in Arkansas. We were established in 2011 and we provide occupational, physical and speech therapy services to children. I am honestly so thrilled to be here with you all and all of the fellow entrepreneur panelists. We're going to be talking about the experiences finding, accessing and benefiting from programs that offer capital, community and education as they have all helped us successfully grow our businesses. With this, I'm so pleased to introduce our amazing lineup of panelists. We have Irene Lee, Alicia McFetridge, and Psyche Terry. So let me tell you about a bit about these amazing ladies. Irene Lee, she is the co-founder of May May Restaurant Group and Prep Shift. Irene, she opened May May Restaurant in Boston in 2013 and has spent the years since then driving the industry forward in ethical sourcing and fair and transparent employment practices. Now, Irene and her team are evolving May May into a packaged dumpling company. Yes, you heard it right, a packaged dumpling company, while also building Prep Shift, which is a tech tool that supports businesses of all sizes to thrive sustainably and equitably. May May has been featured by Food and Wine, The New York Times, People, Bon Appetit, and many more. And Irene is an Eater Young Gun, Forbes 30 Under 30 winner, and six-time James Beard Foundation Rising Star Chef nominee. Oh my goodness. She had, we have such an amazing lineup. So not only do we have the amazing Irene Lee, but let me talk to you about Alicia McFetrick. She is the co-founder and CEO of Rainstick Shower, which is a clean technology company committed to cutting residential water usage in half. Rainstick is a high flow shower system of three GPM that saves 80% water and 80% energy through point of use recirculation and real time cleansing. Alicia, she holds a Master of Science in Climate Change and Development and a Bachelor's in International Business, majoring in sustainability. In 2020, she came first place in the Communitex Fierce Founders Competition and is also the recipient of the Caldwell Partners Future CEO Award and the TD Sustainability Award. She has spent time working, studying, and living in Kenya, China, the Netherlands, the United States, and Canada, where she currently lives today. So that's, that is the amazing Alicia McFetridge. Now let's go to our next panelist, Psyche Terry. She is beauty boss and beauty queen, most recently crowned America's Most Beautiful 2020. Miss Texas 2022 is a fashion and beauty expert and co-founder and CEO of Urban Hydration. Urban Hydration, now the fastest growing natural and affordable personal care brand in the country, began as a collection of natural sugar scrubs for a charitable initiative, which evolved into a carefully curated portfolio of clean, plant-based, personal care products distributed nationwide to stores like Walgreens and Ulta, Target, Walmart, and CVS. In a partnership with Waters Life, Urban Hydration provides life-saving hydration to global communities in need and every product sold. Oh my goodness, how amazing. So that being said, you guys have heard about our three fabulous panelists. So let's just go ahead and dive in. So let's start with some basics. What programs have you participated in? How did you find out about them? And can you let us know, why did you ultimately apply? 
So Psyche, do you mind going ahead and opening up the floor with these, with your answers? Sure. I am a big lover of Goldman Sachs 10KSB. I am a graduate of it and I feel like it was much more, I don't know, it was like my MBA, but in a box. And it was much quicker than my, my master's degree. But it was much more in-depth and it's much more detail. I loved having the opportunity to connect with other founders and other presidents and CEOs and really talk about concerns that I had from a day-to-day -day basis, but also law issues, finance issues. And I think that that was how truly I was, I, I had the gumption to put together a financial plan, believe in the fact that I could do my own finances and then hire the right financial and, and C CFO uh, to help our company. But before that program, I don't, I don't think I had those, that skill set. And I feel like the program really helped me. I took the program and took my MBA in the box by way of 10KSB and pitched to uh, now who are our investors. So we've got a whole member team now because of the program that I went through. So super excited that we were able to raise a quarter of a million dollars because of the program and because I was able to come full-fledged to the table, um, knowing my numbers, knowing uh, you know what I needed and what product I was really selling and what business I was really in and what that EBITDA would look like. You know, all those words that I had no idea what they were, now I know. And we're we've been in business successfully together for like six years. Wow. How amazing. How amazing. And did you tell me, how did you find them? How did you find yeah. out about the Goldman Sachs? Honestly, I, I found out about that program from our local college here. So I'm um, just super excited that I had that opportunity to receive an email. And I think they reached out to another organization that I'm a part of, which is being a woman owned business. And they reached out to another program that I'm a part of, which is I'm a, a minority uh, owned business. So the fact that I'm already connected to other organizations that are very, very helpful in seating um, for other companies and other organizations that are looking for great business businesses to invest in, even if it's mental investment, right? So being able to connect through that route is how I got exposed to it. Psyche, I must admit, I love you made a you made a key point. You said those connections. You were a part of all these other businesses and these other programs. And those connections were what what helped you, what introduced you to the Goldman Sachs 10 KSB. And I think that's so important for others to know the importance of connections. Yes. Absolutely. Right. Wonderful. So, Alicia, you're next. Can you also answer the question and tell me what programs have you participated in? How did you find them and why did you apply? Yeah, totally. Uh, well, I mean, I think the first thing that um, I would say to that is it can be incredibly daunting starting a business and trying to figure out how you are going to fund the business and how you're going to make it work. I know, you know, when we started Rainstick, I knew it would be incredibly capital intensive. And so I was looking to say, you know, how do we actually fund this and get, take this to market? And so I was looking at initially a lot of government grants. So doing a lot of research online to see what sort of programs are available um, I was speaking to accelerators, so I'm I'm at Canadian based uh, right now, and I was looking in to see what's actually available in Canada. There's the Women's uh, Enterprise Center, um, but then I was talking to a friend. So similar, I think, psyche to to you know to your story is connections. And I was speaking with a friend who kept on talking about it was called SheEO, and I didn't know what it was, and I you know, checked it out and they had a webinar. Uh, and so I logged into this webinar and they the whole premise of it was how do we support each other? And so the first half was people were talking about um, a give, so ways that they could support the community and then also an ask. And so I heard about this community uh, and I, I learned that they were going through an application process to receive a hundred K zero interest loan that would be able to, to fund the business. And so I was very interested. I was very intrigued. Um, but for some reason, you know, I think sometimes we don't always think that we're capable of applying. We don't think we're, we're worthy of getting some of this funding that's out there. There's so much funding that's out there. Um, so kind of it took me a while, but I decided to go through the application process. Um, in my case, uh, went through it. It was a couple of months. 
um, but ended up actually receiving this 100K loan through the CEO community. Um, but in addition to that, I was also able to, to get access to a lot of people, mentors, you know, uh, able to, to meet a lot of folks that were also starting their own businesses. And I think that this has been one of the main reasons that Rainstick has got to where we are is because we've been able to connect with a lot of folks that are going through similar things. And so, you know, really for me, it's been through connections. It's been through CEO, looking at government grants, looking at pitch competitions, um, and then finally going through an investment raise process that we did last year. And that's really been the mix that's been able to bring Rainstick to market. Wonderful. Alicia, I really like what you said. You said oftentimes we feel that we're not capable of applying for certain programs, but you stated that you just put yourself out there and you just went ahead and did it. I think that is absolutely amazing. So Irene, I'd like to ask you the same question as well. So for our business, um, we started in 2013 and we hadn't really thought all that much about grants or fundraising because we bootstrapped the heck out of May May. We started out as a food truck and then we opened a tiny little restaurant with almost no budget. And, you know, we were just focused on open the place, get the food out, feed the people and then count the money after. <laughs> But of course, you know, during COVID, um, the whole model of the restaurant industry got totally flipped on its head. And so we started to look at other ways to help support the business. Um, as a woman and minority owned business, as a restaurant business, we were eligible for a lot of different grants from different organizations, um, both in Massachusetts and through the Small Business Administration. And we feel really fortunate that we were able to qualify for a lot of those. And we found out about those because we were on every single listserv you can imagine and people were just sending out stuff all the time apply for this apply for that you know you get to the point where you have all your application information teed up you don't even need to go into your files your drive to find the info you need you're just ready with it and then I think most importantly, um, the launch program with Ladies Who Launch was an incredible grant opportunity for us at Meme. It was what really pushed us to think beyond the restaurant model um, and to move toward this crazy idea, which was let's open a dumpling factory. Um, I think we really needed to hear from people in other industries who were used to kind of big, crazy ideas. And, um, you know, the affirmation, the feedback, the enthusiasm that we got from the folks we worked with at LWL was was what we needed to kind of take that route um, as boldly as possible. And now that we're sort of down the road on that journey, we're so happy that we were able to participate. Wow, I love it. I absolutely love it. And Letitia, you have done such an amazing job accessing programs. Um, what programs have you been able to participate in that have helped you? Okay, so I have participated in several. I participated in the Ladies Who Launch program, the Tory Birch Fellowship, the SBA Emerging Leadership Program, and also the Goldman Sachs 10K SB. And how did I find those programs? Well, Pretty much, I must. Ha I have to echo what you guys have all said. Those connections, making those connections with one program, and then, like you said, Irene, other people started sending me emails in my inbox saying, "Hey, have you heard about this program?" Or, "Hey, what about this program?" And literally, it was those connections that I made with others that introduced me to the programs that were available. And the reason I applied is because 2019, when the pandemic hit. I went to everybody, we all, we all experienced the shutdown. And because I work with children, we experienced the three month, the three month shutdown, literally. And I had, during that time, I had more time than usual to think about how I really wanted to modify and change my business. And at that time, during COVID-19, during the shutdown, I realized that if I was going to survive, I needed to change the way that I have done it these last 10 years um, so that I could position my company to not just survive, but thrive. So that was the reason why I ended up applying to so many of these programs, because I needed, I realized I desperately needed to change the, the way that I had been um, had been performing my business or or. What's the word? I'm at a loss for words. Um, I realized that I needed to change the way that I structured my business. And so that's why I ended up uh, 
applying for other job, other programs. Okay, so let's go into the next question. Irene, we're going to start with you. Can you share a bit about the program model and how it helped your business grow? Yeah, I think, you know, just like you were saying, during COVID, there was so much uncertainty. Um, and part of the program model that really worked for us was having a, a dedicated mentor who we talked with consistently, um, who we just felt like knew what we were going through um, and who could really relate to just how much things were changing, how quickly. Um, when COVID arrived, you know, we thought like, okay, maybe this will be three weeks, um, three months if, uh, if, you know, if things don't go so well. Um, and here we are two years later. And I think that just having someone like along with us, you know, that moral support is really unbeatable. Um, and so to have people with us every step of the way, listening to us, our woes, um, our victories, I think that was one of the things that I really, really appreciated about the program. Because, you know, I have amazing business partners, but we spend every day with each other, right? And so when we can get a pep talk from somebody who's sort of outside the circle, that has a huge impact on all of us and then allows us to really lift each other up. One of the other program elements that was incredible for us was a sort of really intensive branding session um, with the incredible Tish Lara. And we had not gone into the program expecting to rebrand our business, um, but that was where things took us. And so it was the perfect time for us to really think about, okay, what is Maymay? Who are we? What are we trying to do out there? And if it doesn't look like a restaurant, you know, what changes about our brand and what stays the same? And so for us, having the time set aside to really sit back and think about that, that was game changing for us because we had just been doing it all like by the seat of our pants. Like one day we're a restaurant, the next day we're a grocery store, the next day we're an online cooking school. Um, and, you know, you get so wrapped up in trying to keep up that taking that step back, doing some reflecting, trying to think big picture, you really need someone to kind of pull you aside and be like, okay, time to really think about this. Um, and that's what we got through the rebranding process that was so, so valuable for us. All right, so true, Irene, I love it. I feel like uh, when COVID hit and we were faced with this uncertainty, it was like that perfect storm for many of us entrepreneurs. All right, Alicia, can you share a bit about the program model and how it helped your business grow? Yeah, totally. So I'll touch specifically on CEO and the program. So, I mean, it was from the application process. It's quite simple. So I remember, I think I finished the application in about um, an hour or so, but then it actually goes through. So what CEO is, is it's a community of women and others um, that are working on the world's to-do list. And so once you submit an application um, as an interested venture, it's actually the people that are part of the community who go through your application um, and it's them who get to vote on which ventures they wanna see over the next year. So it takes a couple of months as part of the voting. I'm both now an activator is what you call it and a venture now. Now that I've seen the venture side of things, I decided to become an activator as well. Um, but once you're in the program, you actually are part of a, a, a small cohort of ventures that are selected. You get to know them. You get to understand their business challenges. Uh, you get to support each other. You're given a mentor. And then in addition to the capital as well that's provided to you, which you actually collectively decide in the venture cohort um, how you're going to dis disperse this capital. So it's basically, okay, you say, what are you working on? Well, what are you working on? You actually maybe need 120 um, thousand of the 0% interest loan. Whereas this business, they only need 80,000. So you collectively decide where it makes sense. You come to an agreement and then you have a mentor that supports you for the year. Um, you also have access to connections, um, and a lot of sessions, uh, that uh, really help to propel your business forward. So we were a, a venture last year. I've now, uh, you never graduate. That's the other thing is there's more opportunities for capital and support. Um, and now, as mentioned, I'm an activator. So I now get to support ventures that go through this program. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Psyche, do you mind telling us a bit about the program model and how it helped your business grow? Sure. I'll, I'll paint a picture. 
as a as a, a small small business at, at the time, I was in apparel and I was in skincare, and I was hoping to take down the world of both. I had some smaller accounts and was wanting to just continue to grow both of them is to be as big as I could possibly be. But I'll tell you, the weight was heavy. And yes, before the program, I bootstrapped as well. So I understand that, <laughs> Irene. Definitely, I emptied out my 401k and just all of my corporate earnings over 12 years in corporate America was out of the window. And my husband was taking care of me and our kid. And we were using check to check, just whatever we could to finance inventory and warehousing and shipping products out of our house. The picture that I'd love to paint for you is the last day of Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business. And that was a day, I don't know, let's see if you went through this as well in your, in your modular, but we had, uh, it was a, a yarn ball and it was a question of what is it that you need and how can you help? And we throw the ball from what I needed over to another person. And this was a room full of at least 25, 30 people. And I throw it over to someone if I could help provide their need. And they pr throw the ball back over to me if they could help provide my need. And by the end of the day, it was, or the end of the session, it was just a huge spider web of how we could all help each other. And we're all in our DFW local area. And it's just the neatest thing about contacts and communication where at one point before walking in that door, I felt singular. I felt like it was all me and my husband, of course, was helping feed us as a family. But as far as getting the job done, that was on me. When I left the program, I left with an understanding of how to better market my business. I, I left with an understanding of if this is an employee or if it's really a contractor with an understanding of if it's a, a contract in law that I could handle or if I needed to bring in some help. I realized that we needed more help, that we needed more funding, and that I didn't need to be in two businesses. So one of the wonderful things about the program for me is I got to focus. I focused our brand and our storyline into being a, a brand of skincare where we were in three retailers and now we're in you know a, a large handful. You mentioned CVS. Uh, HEB and Rite Aid and Walgreens and Ulta. We're now in 32,000 stores across the country. And yes, we're the fastest growing personal care brand because of programs like Goldman Sachs and Thousand Small Business, because I have people that I could lean on and ask questions for. And now I get to attend their weddings and we get to support each other even past the point. I just got a letter and a gift in the mail from someone I met in that program that's now my internet security provider. It's, it's a fantastic program. Wow. Well, you know, I, I keep hearing this, uh, this recurring thing, connections. It's all about connections, right? And Letitia, what about you? How did the Tory Birch program help you with your business? The Tory Birch program. Oh my goodness. Where do I begin? I didn't realize that there were so many things that I needed to change and modify within my business until going through the different modules. They talked about crowdfunding, creating a pitch deck. And let me mind you, I had no idea what a pitch deck was. Um, and then the art of pitching and knowing your why and your ask, knowing your ask, what are you going to ask investors for? These are things that were not common to my, to my field. So the way the Tory Birch Foundation um, helped me is it really helped me realize that I needed to modify things. Now I'm proud to say that I actually have a pitch deck. If someone comes to me and they and I have to give them their pitch, I have my one minute, two minute, three minute pitch ingrained in my head and I'm not afraid to tell people. All right, so let's go to our final question. What was the most impactful element of the program for each of you? So Irene, do you mind starting? Yeah, I would love to start. Um, I don't think we're supposed to say the money, but for us, the money was a huge, I think, symbol of what the program provided at the end of the day, which was the ability to think big. Um, so part of what we did in our transition from restaurant to dumpling company is we invested in a giant piece of equipment um, that came all the way from Taiwan that allows us to make up to 10,000 dumplings an hour, which is 
many, many times what we had been doing in a whole week. And mind you, we can't keep up with 10,000 an hour. We might do, you know, one or 2,000 an hour, but still that has totally changed the game for us in terms of how our entire operation runs. Um, and let me say, you know, I definitely had never spent that kind of money on a piece of equipment before, and I probably never even would have dreamed of it. Um, that, you know, we're used to scrimping and saving and um, buying used equipment and making sure that every dollar we bring in, you know, we know exactly where it's going. It's a piece of equipment we've used before, you know, we know we've done all the research and for this like this was just such a huge step outside of our comfort zone and we never would have been able to do that without of course you know the moral support and the coaching but also the funds that were made available to us through the program wonderful alicia what about you um yeah i think you know similar to irene it's there's some programs that are out there and to me the most impactful ones are those that provide the mentorship and this the skills essentially to help you succeed but also the funding I, and i think you know it, we need more programs out there and that's why i speak so highly of you know the ones that we've all been involved with that provide both mentorship and capital to be successful great great and psyche well, I will, I will, I will say that the last day of the program, we were all like, do we get invested in by Goldman Sachs at, at the end of this? <laughs> it was a funny ongoing joke where they're like, no, no, we're here to help you get, you know, get your confidence and get your pitch deck together so you can go out to the world. And I'd say that that's exactly what I did. I didn't, I, I didn't expect to actually have that opportunity, but one thing led to another in a family at our church was willing to hear me out. And I think just that confidence and that presentation and understanding the data that I was putting before them was my biggest takeaway from the program. And of course, getting the money after I was done. I love it, I love it. So for me, with the Ladies Who Launch program, what helped me out the most was the money as as Irene stated, but not only the money, but but they also helped me to rebrand. They taught me the importance of utilizing tools for social media and knowing and looking at the SEO. For Goldman Sachs, like you said, Psyche, knowing my numbers, which I did not know. With the Tory Burch Fellowship, the pitch deck was the biggest takeaway. And for, for the SBA program, Emerging Leaders, it was also, they reiterated the importance of knowing my numbers and crafting my, my pitch. So I want to thank everybody for attending today's seminar. These, the, the Tory Birch, CEO program, Goldman Sachs, Ladies Who Launch, these are just a few of the programs that are available. And there are so many more programs out there. I would just, I would like to, to encourage you all to continue to seek after programs that are readily available. I want to thank the panelists, Irene, Alicia and Psyche, thank you all so much for sharing your insight concerning your journey, because I know it's one that's going to help so many others. Next, I, I want you all to know that we're going to hear from two extraordinary leaders next. I want to encourage you to join the 27th Administrator of the U.S. Small Business Association, Isabella Casillas Guzman, to learn more about the SBA's vast funding, educational, and local resources. See you there, and thank you again for joining us.